outer space, that obscure, boundless expanse that has boggled our minds since the first human cast his gaze upwards and found the stars. What you are watching blaze through Earth's celestial sphere is a meteor, perhaps only seconds away from colliding violently with Earth's surface. As soon as it makes contact with the ground, that meteor will become a meteorite. And with a bit of luck, it will eventually be recovered. Meet Dave Giesling. An intelligent yet humble man of various professions, Dave began his career in the flooring business with his company Flora Expo, which he began shortly after graduating college. He later moved on to become a successful public speaker and now focuses most of his time and effort on parenting his only daughter, Maddie. While Dave's jobs and careers are definitely worth celebrating, they are not what sets him apart from the average family man. No, what makes Dave unique are the many mysterious rocks that he keeps hidden in an anonymous location. This secret haven, which would deny entry to even the most masterful of thieves, is far more unique than one might think, for it holds more than just rocks. It holds rocks from outer space. In fact, Dave is both a collector and hunter of meteorites. After acquiring his first meteorite in late 2000, Dave was hooked and has been a collector since. Now, his collection has grown so much to necessitate the need for a separate hidden room solely for his collection, which includes hundreds, maybe even thousands of individual meteorites, all purchased or personally found by Dave himself. Of course, Dave will tell you that money has no significant role with meteorites, as the rocks themselves are priceless. This is very true. To put it in perspective for you, let's take a look at the spectacular fireball as it soars through the sky over Chelyabinsk, Russia. The main mass of this meteor now sits here in Dave's room. Now you may be asking, what exactly is a meteorite? Now this is a very common question for anyone who has visited Dave's rock room, but really, meteorites are not that complicated. Picture a small dark gray rock. Imagine how it would feel if you picked it up or if you threw it. If you can picture that, then you understand the basic properties of meteorites. Simply put, Meteorites are rocks that were floating around in space before they entered Earth's atmosphere, started burning up as they accelerated, and eventually crash-landed in who knows where. Even the concept of holding a single piece of space directly in your hand is mind-blowing. The question is, where did he get these meteorites? In fact, the process that goes into acquiring just one meteorite is far more complicated than you might realize. So meteorites are the rarest rocks on planet Earth. More gold is mined on the planet Earth every year than is represented by weight in all meteorite collections known on the entire planet. Now that they fall is not so rare. They fall every day. 71% go in the ocean, never to be found again. They may fall in the middle of the rainforest where they're nearly impossible to find. So that they fall is not particularly rare. What's very rare is that they're recovered. And hunting meteorites can be very, very difficult. Meteorites can be as small as a grain of sand or even larger than a microwave. Most of the time, however, they're on the small side, which makes them that much more difficult to find. We use a variety of means to do this in the field. For witness falls, we may go look for just one piece. If we can find one piece of the meteorite, we could begin to map what is known as a strewn field, where the pieces are distributed and weight sorted. Smallest fall first, and the largest pieces have more inertia, and they travel the greatest distance down the strewn field line. And if we find one piece, we can begin to map that strewn field line. Sometimes we do that with our eyes, sometimes we do that with metal detection equipment, and sometimes we use other means to hunt meteorites. But the interesting thing really is not so much the hunting itself, it's the predicaments that we can get ourselves into. Not uncommon to wind up in a high altitude situation with mountain lions or in a desert area with rattlesnakes all over the place and 115 or 20 degree temperatures. 
illegal aliens near the border that are armed with weapons. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. In the field, the stories with particularly Robert Ward are amazing. The morning of April 22nd, 2012 began as just another day for the residents of the Coloma Valley Resort communities in California. As usual, it was nothing but clear skies and perfect weather for this tourist destination, which was made famous by James Marshall's discovery of gold at Sutter's Mill in 1848. However, something extraordinary was on its way. At 7.51 a.m., a brilliant fireball appeared in the skies above the valley descending from the east and fragmenting nearly overhead, releasing 3.8 kilotons of energy. A blast of wind descended down the valley, followed by thunderous sonic booms that were heard and felt by the people in the surrounding area. Robert Ward, arguably the most successful and well-known meteorite hunter today, was among the first to be notified of the event. He packed his bags immediately and arrived in Coloma, California the next day. After roaming the area for a few hours and familiarizing himself with its layout, Robert happened to notice a small charcoal gray object on the ground a couple feet away. He picked up the stone and was astonished to see a typical frothy fusion crust with a bluish silver hue. There was no doubt in the hunter's mind, this was a meteorite. Not only was this the first meteorite found from this event, but Robert could tell immediately that this was an extraordinary class of meteorite known as a carbonaceous chondrite. True to the competitive nature of meteorite hunting, Robert went public with this find, and in just a few hours was joined by several other scientists and meteorite hunters. It didn't take long for the next piece to be found, and soon after it was, Robert and company were suddenly facing cameras from every national news network. Within hours, the story went worldwide, and soon mobs of people showed up looking to strike it rich by finding a piece of this cosmic treasure. The Sutter's Millfall soon became the largest meteorite hunt in history. Shortly thereafter, Robert became inflicted with poison oak from the hunt and soon found himself in an urgent care facility receiving treatment for the allergic reaction to the plant. After spending several painful days in his hotel room, Robert's symptoms began to subside. Normally, a nasty poison oak infection like this would prevent anyone from continuing their search, but being a passionate meteorite hunter, Robert is well practiced in dealing with even the most shocking of obstacles. Having once been unfairly imprisoned for two months in Oman after being arrested for meteorite hunting, a little poison oak hardly hinders the ever determined Robert Ward. A week passed with only a few finds, until a local stumbled upon a 35 gram stone, the largest find yet. After much negotiation, the finder agreed to sell the meteorite to Dave Giesling. Many more weeks of hard hunting would demonstrate the rarity of stones from this fall. Ticks soon became an issue as well, as Robert discovered a red inflamed bite on his shoulder, and new blisters from the poison oak were a daily occurrence. Robert was wearing down, both physically and mentally. One night, as Robert contemplated taking a break from the hunt, his phone rang. It was Dave Giesling. Dave informed Robert that he in fact had purchased the 35 gram stone from the local man, and that as part of the deal, the pair of them would be allowed to hunt his property. Dave would be arriving later the next day to join Robert. Hanging up the phone, the last thing Dave said was, I expect you to find a bigger one before I get there. After only about 20 minutes of searching the new property, Robert found what he had been looking for. A large individual meteorite lay perfectly tucked in amongst a small patch of clover. He knew upon first glance that this was now the largest piece found to date. Robert excitedly called Dave and left a message about the good news, knowing that he was in the air and would not receive the message until he landed hours later. Dave, you need to give us a call right away. Uh, we were walking the boundary and uh, guess what? Uh, I just found the new main pass, I think. <laughs> We're sitting here staring at another 100% crusted, gorgeous stone. Uh, needless to say, this is, uh, you know, like the most incredible moment of my year at hunting career. <laughs> We're just sitting here having a good laugh. Give me a call, bud. Talk to you soon. Finally, the weeks and weeks of hard labor paid off. 
Dave and Robert now had the two largest pieces of this incredibly rare meteorite. But the story doesn't end there, as Robert soon returned to hunting. His trek was cut short, however, when he started experiencing drastic pain, disorientation, and fatigue. The tick bite that he had acquired weeks earlier had caught up with him. He had been infected with an extremely rare case of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. It was several months before he was able to function outdoors with any normality again. It turns out that Robert had contracted the first case of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever in California in 88 years. Despite their many major setbacks, Dave and Robert were still successful in their endeavors. All of these rocks, every single one of them, incredible stories of incredible odds that they would be here at all. All the way through hundreds of millions, perhaps billions of years traveling through outer space, a chance collision in the asteroid belt perhaps, sending it on a path to collide with Earth at some point, not falling into the middle of the ocean, being in a place that, that where it may be witnessed to fall, or recovered in a desert by a hunter or by happenstance. It's almost impossible that these rocks get here, and to think only 200 years ago, scientists did not even believe that rocks were falling from the sky. No one could understand how they got up there in the first place.